Welcome back to the LEC after this crazy last game, Misfits finally take the revenge on G2 after the first game that happened between them during the split. Shatan, thank you so much for joining me. Any few words on this game, please? <laughs> Any words? Mm, yeah, we won, I guess. Like It was a really hard game at the early game mm -hmm. and then they just kept throwing all the time. So we got it back in the end, but I'm not really like, happy with uh, how the game went, right? All right. I was, I was feeling not the best in the game. <laughs> you get a W in the end. And there's something about Misfits coming back from deficits, but you mentioned the early game. I was actually feeling super bad for you, given the invades that Yonkos put you through. Talk me through your early game and what it took for you to get back in the game after what he did to you. So basically, I was thinking if they're going to like late invade me, level yeah. one. And I was like, we have better level one, they're not going to do it. And then they went anyway, and then I got like behind from that. And then the worst part comes because if you got late, like late invade level one, and then you have like three losing lines with yeah. pri prios, then the hard times begins, and I can't like farm anything, and my camp timers like were really bad. So yeah, it was hard from like that moment, and then they just kept snowballing, snowballing pretty well. Mm -hmm. They did like really good with high rails, like they didn't do drakes, I guess, but they took every turret and they were like killing us and taking every plate. And yeah, then they just I don't know if they had fun in the end or what they were playing for, but. Uh, it felt like they are not playing serious at the end and just right. threw a lot, you know, gave us shutdowns and that's how we came back. Maybe losing their track of thoughts and not knowing what to do, but also you being able to capitalize on all that. And I remember the first game you played with them. It was actually the same situation, but you couldn't just put it through and get, get the win in the end. So what was different this time, especially in the mindset and the communication all around to just stay focused? Well, I think it was like pretty similar, just the difference, as you said, like maybe yeah. we were more focused at the end because the, even the first game against them, like we're really behind as well. We also had like worse early game and we played bad early game, but then we could finish the Nexus. Like they gave us so much free time and they threw the game and we could finish the Nexus, but we just, I don't know, we just like Neon did something stupid, I did something <laughs> stupid, everyone did something stupid. But this game, we were more focused at the end, I guess. Yeah. So we came back, yeah. We got them in the second half, yeah. Turned out, <laughs> yeah. And that's what matters in the end. But Shlatan, there's something about Misfits thriving in bad situations, I want to say. Usually, guys, play from a deficit more often than with a lead. How do you explain that and the fact that you're so good playing from behind? I mean, I don't have anything like specific like okay. that. I think we're like good at playing from behind. I think it just comes from the like enemy team giving us too much maybe free time or like just inting, honestly. Like they were just inting. Same for their first game. It wasn't like they they like played really good or something and then we just came back, but they were just inting. So yeah, I mean, I just hope we get better at early games and then okay. I hope the LEC teams will still keep inting and then we can get more wins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Int aside, you mentioned the early game, and I think it's interesting, you just got playoffs here. And before the interview, you were telling me that you, you don't care actually about making playoffs. I feel that being the perfectionist you are, you want to be at your top form reaching playoffs. So you mentioned the early game getting better. What else do you want to improve on to be ready for playoffs? Just uh, other, like being more confident, maybe playing on stage, playing more stage games. Maybe this will help me as well. And I think like we need to work on like our teamwork because yeah. it just feels like we are more playing as individuals than a team yet. But I hope with screen time it will be get better. And yeah, that's it. Mentioning stage, do you think you play better on stage? It's different from player to player. Uh, I know, it's, so. it's, like, it's like just different. I, know, like, I feel like I play worse because like the setup is actually different. So maybe mm -hmm. with time it will be better. All right. But it feels worse for now. <laughs> well, uh, it feels really good having you guys back in the studio, of course. Last question for you. We're going to have Vitio in PGL in just a few minutes. He's been popping off lately, really. What's your take on his success and improvements over the split? Mm, yeah, I mean, like last year I was in the academy, right? And we misfit and I saw him playing and he was pretty good, right? With his Zoe. <laughs> He was one trick back then and he was playing really good in LEC with this time, but overall he wasn't as good as right now. He improved so much. He went to Korea to, to do his boot camp and I don't know, he just put so much effort. Maybe that's why he's way better now. And yeah, I'm happy to play with him. And a good jungler paired with him, of course. Shletan, <laughs> thank, thank you. you so much for the interview. Congrats on making your first LEC playoffs. And we're going to take a short break now and we'll be back with Vitio and Shox for the post-game lobby. Actually, it's right now. Take it away, Shox. <laughs> Thank you, Lore. Yeah, no, there's no more break. <laughs> I was surprised too. Uh, great interview, by the way. Great energy. And I'm super happy that we have Vitio with us here in the post-game lobby together with Broxa. Um, because uh, a little bit of background of, on how this works. Basically, all teams can be on PGL or have to be on PGL at least once, of course, during the split of the season. And Misfits hadn't been yet, so we asked Misfits, hey, could Vitio join win or lose after their game versus G2? But as you can imagine, 10 minutes into that game, we were going to send a note to your management 
to excuse you if you wanted to, because, oh my God, PTO, that was insane. How did you come back from that 10K deficit? Uh, how did we come back? I don't, I have no <laughs> idea. I mean, this game was crazy. Uh, it was really, I mean, hard to play because when you lose like both in about 17 minutes, you say, yeah, but uh, I kind of want to play too. Mm -hmm. So when, uh, when we see them eating, when because they they got too cocky eating our like tour nexus at 17 minutes, so we said okay, the guys we we need to at least play the game. So we keep taking good fights, and they keep like griefing and doing nothing. You could see that they were a bit stressed during game, I think, because uh, is it like for 15 minutes they didn't do anything, and because we had like so many, I mean, we had two inip downs, we had so many XP and golds advantage. And without comp, we were kind of outscaling anyway, so we couldn't lose the game, I felt like, mm -hmm. at one point. Crazy. Uh, Broxa, what was your view on what G2 did badly and what Misfits did well? Well, I, I found it interesting that you said that at one point it feels like you're ahead all of a sudden, because when you're in the game, when you stall for that long, that's kind of what it feels like. But the crazy part is that because you guys were so far down, like 10k so early, it's like, at the point where you're in the game and you feel like you're stronger, you're actually only even with G2 <laughs> all of a sudden. So it feels like you're ahead, you feel like you have some momentum. And I think you did, like at one point, you know, as you said, it felt like G2 were getting stressed. I'm sure they were kind of shaking towards the end, you know, throwing throwing that game. And um, yeah, you guys just kept finding finding picks and taking them down, really. Look at, oh, it's gone, but it's going to come back. Oh, there it is. Um, the goal difference over time. <laughs> That is nuts. Obviously, you can't really know exactly how far you're behind. Uh, but is it true, Abraxa says, that because of if you were so far behind and you managed to hang on and then you win like skirmish after skirmish after skirmish, do you just begin to feel like you are in control, even though technically you might not be? I mean, when you win every fight, you just feel that you can't lose. At one point, I remember saying like, guys, we can't lose any fight anyway. So it's fine because... Yeah, we couldn't lose fight because our comp, we were outscaling, out XP. And I think like XP has a lot of value that you can't measure it with goals, but uh, XP has a lot of value. I was like two levels up and like AD and top were one level up when we were like 10K behind. So yeah, at one point I just felt like we couldn't uh, really lose uh, the game. Mm -hmm. You've got the Kia player of the game again with 95% of the votes, you now have nine player of the games. And I know there's a lot of chatter online that people are like, well, the French people are very fashionate, blah, 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 but you deserve this one and you deserve so many of the others as well. Um, yeah, how do you feel about the fact that you're getting so much, I think, recognition also from the wider community as, as to how you've been playing this season? Uh, to be really honest, I don't really care. It's like, I mean, it's good and I feel like sometimes some that I won could have went to my teammates and it was totally fine. I won maybe because, I mean, that's a bit, bit strange, but yeah, I have probably the biggest fan base uh, out of my teammates. So sometimes it's more like a fan vote. And uh, yeah, I don't really care. It's like I'm playing good when, I mean, I'm the first who knows uh, when I'm playing good and when I'm playing bad. and. Uh, I mean, it's, it feels like a bit good, but I don't really care that much. Mm, yeah, I think Broxa can probably relate. Or you're probably on a lot of teams where you thought you always did well and you did, but there were other names that always got the fan bases and the votes. Unlucky. Well, what really strikes out to me is like the humbleness, you know, saying like, oh, I would like to share it with my team. It's like a team effort. I mean, you have been playing really well and obviously you deserve it. I and mean, there was one thing I just thought about, like... Um, because you've been doing really well in this current meta. Like, are there any champions, mid lane champions you're missing that you would like to see come back into the meta? I mean, there is, I think that right now, and in general, I can say like a lot of styles of champs. And uh, yes, yeah, there is like some of champs that I really like uh, that are a bit missing or less powerful than they were. But uh, to be honest, I, every meta will find some picks that I like. So it doesn't really matter because I know meta shifts and I have a lot of time to play and a lot of time to play the champs I like, it will rotate. So for me, I really like how the meta is going. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, I I love that you're so humble as well, but I I think everybody can see that um, you're playing so well. And it's really cool to see in following you for a few for a few years now and the fact that you came onto the scene as a rookie um, and then you were just finding your ceiling, which is super crazy. I know that you renamed your uh, account, I believe, to MVP 2022 MVP. um, And I think that really signifies the growth and the work that you put in yourself. how do you feel about your own work ethic uh, when it comes to um, being the best? And do you feel like you put in more hours or do you uh, approach practice from a different way, etc.? cetera? Um, I think I have good work ethic. I play a lot. I mean, it's like league is my whole life and I put my whole life into league. So ju- I just play when I don't play. I watch VODs or stuff. I just think about league uh, every time. So I think I have good work ethic. Uh, I can maybe still put more effort in in scrims and and maybe like get less affected by my solo queue results too. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, my work ethic is good, and uh, I think uh, that at least I have the right mentality. That and uh, that's one of my strengths. I think. Mm-hmm. Is there anything you do different now than last year? Now that you have more experience. When like when you look at like what your games day, like this, day, for day is like, um, like I mean, like on a regular mm-hmm. day, is there anything you do differently compared to last year? I think that last year, uh, I mean, I always really wanted to win, but this year I feel more like I do everything I can to win, and that I I think I could have done more last year in this uh, in the yeah, uh, and uh, right now uh, I mean I can still probably do more but i have really the feeling that i do everything i can to win and to become better uh so yeah i think uh, that that change between i think like the fact of missing worlds last year really really affected me mm-hmm. and uh during off season uh, i just wanted to to not lose again so uh, right now uh, i mean maybe I don't win every time, but at least I do everything I can to win. Yeah, um, and it wasn't uh, the easiest in terms of, uh, it's not like you were playing with the same team coming into this year. There were adjustments made as well, but you've now already locked in the playoffs, which means that uh, you can approach the rest of the season in a different way. I guess you can really work on the things you want to work on. When you look at your team as a whole, uh, where are there areas of work? I would say maybe the early game, but on the other hand, you keep losing the early game and winning the game, so... <laughs> yeah, I think we can definitely become way better on lane, uh, how to play first, right, first herald. And, uh, and laning phase, I think we need experience. I mean, I've been rookie last year, and I think experience gave you so much confidence and stuff. I mean. To be fair, I think my teammates are doing insanely well. Uh, Schlatan and, and Mercer are doing so great and uh, way better than, than me last year. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I am really confident with this team, the, with experience and uh, keep working on, on the stuff we're missing and uh, keep uh, playing new champs and stuff like this. We can really, I mean, I think we have like, we can work, fine but we can become so so much better than we are right now mm-hmm. uh, are you the leader or do you feel like the leader uh i i don't i don't know i don't think so i think uh i'm just a normal person that gives his best <laughs> and uh, uh i don't think we have a real leader just uh, everyone is is trying their best and i mean i think that's really good this way Mm-hmm. Um, final question about the game before we talk about the standings. Um, do you feel like playing a game like this and coming back from a deficit like this on stage is um, valuable in terms of the lessons you learn and you you are going to have to learn going into the playoffs and going up against these teams in best of fives? Um, I think, I mean, you can learn so much from this game, to be honest. And uh, I think it feels really good. It, keeps us closer to win this kind of game, come back every, nobody gave up and stuff like this. But I just think we played really poorly early game and uh, we need to work on our early game uh, before playoffs. 
Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at the standings then, because right now um, Rogue, Fnatic and Misfits are all already locked in playoffs. Unfortunately, Astralis is eliminated. They had uh, a very good fight and they won a, f a few games and actually a lot of games and I think gave hope to the fans and everyone. But unfortunately, it is their exit. Uh, Braxa, what do you make of our current uh, top three? Is this what you had expected preseason? To be honest, I'm not very surprised about the, the current top three. Obviously, a lot of people were expecting G2, Vitality to, to be further up the standings. But at the same time, um, Vivi already mentioned how important the experience is for a team like Misfits, obviously mixing in a few rookies, but also having some members with experience stepping up big time. Um, Rogue and Fnatic also experienced rosters, and I think most of all the experience has really been paying off. A team like Vitality, I guess, is the exception, yeah. exception to that in general, but very strong uh, top right now. Mm -hmm. uh, VTO, when you look at the standings and the race for playoffs, uh, we of course have a lot that can st still happen, but I'm looking at Vitality, SK Gaming, Mad Lions, BDS maybe even. Um, who's your pick to be like the last team that makes it into the playoffs and maybe who falls out? Uh, I think the playoff will be like this. Uh -huh. uh, I think Vitality, G2 and Excel will make it uh, with the top three. Uh, I don't know which order, but uh, but uh, I think uh, this has, uh, this are the six teams who will, who will make playoffs. So no Mad Lions and no SK Gaming? No, uh, I don't Oof. think so. Uh, is this coming also off you scrimming and then just seeing their potential? Mm. Not really. It's more about what I see on stage, mm -hmm. because I mean, to be fair, I don't think we're a good scrim team. Oh. I mean, <laughs> lately we're not doing that good on scrim, so I can't really relate to scrims. But I can see how teams play. I mean, when I scrim them and when they play on stage, I can even see the difference. So yeah, it's most mostly about uh, what I see from them on stage. This looked like a scrim, to be honest, <laughs> this game. <laughs> Is, if this happens in a scrim, do you say, let's go next, or? I mean, with what happened early, I think we'll probably remake the game. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Yeah, see, I mean, you didn't even practice it, and yet it worked when you did it on stage. That's very impressive. Let's take a look at tomorrow's schedule. We have the match of the week, Mad versus Fnatic, both on very different trajectories. And I hear you, um, people that are like, well, why don't you take another match? Because Mad's not doing too well. But that's exactly why we want to make it a match of the week, because Mad might fall out of the playoffs, which is crazy. And we also have XL versus Rogue, which is going to be huge for playoffs. Um, yeah, Mad versus Fnatic, the match of the week. Mats, uh, Broxa, what do you think after what you saw today. <laughs> Ouch. I, I think overall, um, today has turned out very different than I expected uh, coming into it. So I'm not really sure what, what, to, what to expect going into tomorrow. Um, I think there's a lot of exciting games. Obviously, Matt versus Fnatic being a very interesting one mm -hmm. towards the end. And while it's match of the week, if Matt and Fnatic play the way they did today, then I think it's going to be pretty one-sided. So I guess we'll see. Yeah, unfortunately, that kind of looks like it. Um, uh, as said, also Excel and Rogue up versus each other. Huge battles in terms of the playoffs. But VTO and Misfits can rest easy because they have already made it to the playoffs. I'd like to take a PGL selfie. Uh, socially distance, of course. <laughs> I forget that I have a handheld mic, so if you didn't hear me, um, we had to get a PGL selfie. And thank you so much, Broxa, for being here today, and you'll be here tomorrow as well. Thank you, VTO. Congratulations once again. And that's all from us here tonight. Over in the LCS, uh, rather, they're going to start their super week. They're going to start with a clash between Cloud9 and Dignitas, and we'll see you for more LEC tomorrow. Bye-bye. Finn uses the skull timing flawlessly. Bear trap on a rope does land. No, it doesn't. It just yeah, Finn flashes no. forward though. And now Armor's running for his life. One more hit will just about do it. Skull is still alive. Finn running gets the chop. And Finn for first blood. I'm dead, man. Holy. Excel. Outclass, outshine. Oh my god, Trevor, it smells like playoffs. Oh, I it don't know smells if we should say like it. I don't know if, if we should say it. I have bought into the XL hype train so many times, only to be dropped at the final hurdle. Be but will it pay? Get excited! Now it's slammed in the face by Zenzora. Copy turns it back around, and one more shot. He gets all three! 
Oh my word, Expandy gets all three. You just do not chase a Jinx with 1% HP bar remaining. Vitality don't mind losing the fight because their super minions will win the game. Afari stepping all the way forward. We literally have a picture in picture for the minions. Oh, oh my word. Game, Alfari. Vitality PVE their way to win. Alfari starteth, Alfari endeth here. Oh my word. Did they say that? All right, looks like going forward. Yeah. Moonfall's gonna land. Trimby, though, with a good devour, he will fall. Larson, though, look for some damage. Still has the shockwave. Oda one may forced away. Shockwave lands onto two, but look at the damage coming out from Wonder. He chases in. That was complete control from start to finish. Entirely different from the first game we saw between these two teams. And in the end, it was Upset and Fnatic who came out on top. A single win will take them to playoffs, and they're looking to try and get some kills back here. Caps or slow. Neon on the chase. VTO diving in as well. And G2, they got two inhibitors, but maybe they overchase. Broken Blade, though, having none of it. And my heart isn't ready for this. I'm a guest. I'm not supposed to live through this, Benning. This isn't what I came here for. Welcome to the LEC. Final chapter goes wide. TP though from Herit as he's killed off Caps. And G2 have no defenses left. Misfits with the comeback of the flipping century as they take down G2. Misfits, that was insane. How do you manage to bring that 